Dreer enjoying Bray Wanderer's involvement. Esteban Dreer has spoken of his enjoyment playing under equality. It's great to play for the club and to play for a manager who has faith in my ability and picks me on a regular basis. Great to play for a manager who has faith in my ability. Really? What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Saving Bray. This is the 10th episode of this series and in today's episode we've got games against West Bromwich Albion, Crystal Palace, also Arsenal away. In our last match we were thrashed by Manchester United by 4 goals to 1 so in today's episode I'm desperate for us to return to form and start picking up the points again and after these 3 games we'll officially be at the halfway point in the Premier League season so we can stay out of the relegation zone come the end of our 19th game I'll be absolutely delighted. Either way, enjoy the episode and here's hoping Esteban Dria continues to keep his form strong. Can't say that with straight face. Alright, so first game of three in today's episode, West Bromwich Albion away at Hawthorns. I think we could get a win in this game, you know, I really do. And West Brom's team looks like this. You know, it's got some decent players in there, you know, it really does. Victor Anachebe, a, a really powerful striker. He's got Craig Garner who can bang in from range. Chris Brunt as well. Back four is pretty solid, but I, I honestly believe we can get a win this game. I know we lost 4-1 to United in the last one, but I think we can get a result here. I really do. Well, it's 0-0 uh, it's at the Hawthorns, and this has been one of the worst games of FIFA I've ever played. Wow. I mean, seriously. I don't think this game has been worth the price of admission. I really don't. There has been one shot in the entire game and three tackles. And other than that, there has been literally nothing going on. If there was ever a game that was a dead cert for last or match of the day, this is it. When people ask me why I say FIFA 16 is the worst FIFA I have ever played, and I've played since 99, this game is why. It is such a tedious game offline. I feel like there's a torture camp somewhere in Guantanamo Bay where they just play footage of FIFA 16 where two AI teams play against each other on Legendary and just pass the ball around for 90 minutes on 20 minute halves. I, I think that's probably a new method of torture. 62 minutes now and there still hasn't been more than one shot in the entire game. But here's Conley down the right hand side to Tumacero and a chance on the break. See the thing is I'm trying to get chances but I can't do it because their defence is better than my offence. As Tumacero gets on the ball through to Brennan. Chance here maybe. Brennan. Shot comes in and goes just off target. So we, we saw a shot. We saw another shot. Some would go as far as saying it's a dying art. The art of shooting in FIFA 16. But um, sometimes it does happen. Gamble Boa for West Bromwich Albion, launches it long, header comes in from Sessegnon, oh that's the pantry. <laughs> the most exciting moment of the game was an offside header from Sessegnon which hit the post because Esteban Dria missed the ball again. I don't believe this. Brennan out wide towards Moore. Maybe we could still win the game here. Moore down left-hand side towards Lookman. He's got one man to beat in Gamboa. Can he do so? Still Lookman on the ball. Takes it round Gamboa. Does really well Lookman here. Needs a man inside. He'll find Chilwell to win the game. Oh, he's done it. I don't believe it. Ben Chilwell has scored with just over 12 minutes to go. And we are going to win the game at the Hawthorns. Lookman out muscles Gamboa. Feeds it inside towards Chilwell. Who with the first time strike puts it past Rose into the back of the net, scores his first Bray Wanderers goal, West Brom nil Bray Wanderers 1, and this has been one of the worst games of all time, yet we may be coming through the three points. Wow. I don't believe it. We've won the game. This is incredible. Well, there you go then. West Bromwich Albion nil. Bray Wanderers won. One of the worst games of FIFA of all time. But we've got to win. We've returned to winning ways after just one game without one. Chilwell's late goal settles the sides. And we get all three points. Match highlights. Connolly's missed. Chilwell's goal. That's it. FIFA 16. Play beautiful. I mean, there were some beautiful passes on offer. I, I particularly like this one here, which I'll show you now. This this was a great pass, and this was definitely highlight worthy. Um, this one I thought was an underrated pass as well. One of those which, you know, you don't always remember, but those that do remember it, remember it very fondly. Um, this one here didn't really get the credit it deserved on the pitch at the time. Tony Pulis clapped. I thought, mm, you know, that wasn't a bad pass from a West Brom man there. This one, my personal favourite though. Just look at the way he wraps his foot around the ball and finds his teammate. I mean, that's, that's glorious. You, you can't coach that. I'm sure West Brom are proud to have left the game with one shot in the entire game, which I do believe was the offside header from Sessegnon. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think, I think the fans will be proud. I think the fans will be proud. The team gave it their all. 
they were just quite unfortunate. Man of the match does go to Chilwell for being part of the back four that kept a clean sheet and scoring a winning goal, but I think an honourable mention does deserve to go to all of the fans that turned up and didn't leave at half time and didn't fall asleep by full time. So well done to those fans. When you think about the headlines that the newspapers could use on Sunday morning, I think they'd probably go with the snooze fest at the Hawthorns. That probably describes the game better than we ever could. All right, so let's just forget about that game. I know we won it and it's only our fifth win of the season, but let's just forget it even happened and move on to the next one against Crystal Palace. To so think we won that game and kept a clean sheet, two things I was really hopeful of, something we haven't done much this season. I'm still sitting there thinking, I really hope that the next game I play isn't like that one. That's, that's how bad it is in this year's game. Like, I'm honestly annoyed that we won that game due to the manner of how we won it. I do feel this game will be much better as well. So, you know, fingers crossed. Here's hoping I'm not wrong. Here's hoping you haven't jinxed it. And we will see more chances today. Come on. All right, so Palace's side for this game looks like this. It's all right, it's not bad at all, but uh, a couple of names in there that I'm not too familiar with. Ketting's the goalkeeper and O'Dwyer playing centre-back. Has got Wilfred Balassi. A uh, Wilfred Balassi? What? It has got Wilfred Zahar and Yannick Balassi, I meant to say. But um, either way, a pretty decent team. Wickham as well. It, it's got some decent players in there, but just like the West Brom game, I think we can get a win in it. So let's get two wins from two. Only our second back-to-back -back win, if you will, all season long. Let's do it. But please, EA please I would rather lose the game than win if it means that we get to see more than one shot on target or oh, Ledley's found Balassi back to Joe Ledley who goes for goal good save Esteban Drea goodbye finds Joe Ledley here for Palace and Ledley finds Balassi good tackle by Conley but Balassi just won it back so easily there and Yannick's got the skill here has he got the pace in the end product oh Balassi's taken out Conley cross to the centre and the header goes up in the air out comes Drea punches it away only as far as Joel Ward who controls it still Joel Ward who goes for goal oh my word what a goal that goal Goal from Joel Ward was unbelievable. Drea punches the ball away, gets two good fists on it. He chests it, takes one touch, and then on a half volley, puts it into the top corner. That is a sensational strike by the Palace fullback, and they take the lead here at Carlisle Grounds. I mean, I'm telling you right now, we saw a great goal from Fellaini in the last game. I think that one's even better. Last episode, I should say. I think that one's even better. Unbelievable goal by Joel Ward, and it's 1 0 to the away side. Jumacero plays the ball long towards Ricketts here. He's got the pace on Scott Dan, surely. Come on, Ricketts. You've got this, mate. You've got this. Tosse and Ricketts. Really well done. Ricketts. Good save by Kettings at his near post. And at half time, Palace have the lead by a goal to nil. Joel Ward, sensational strike, separates the sides. Really good finish there. Palace has shown so much more, you know, urgency and willingness to attack in this game than West Brom did in the entirety of the last game. We've only recorded a single shot through Ricketts, but there's still a chance for us to get back in the game as we trail at the break. Come on, Bray. Half an now to go, corner to Bray, Chumacero to take it, swings it into the centre, looking for Kenner with a free header, off the bar, off the bar from Kenner, and cleared by Palace, what a chance, a free header, and our centre-back couldn't convert it. I'm doing my best to try and find an equalising goal, but Palace keep on making the interceptions, and as Yednak goes down left-hand side here, they could be through for a second, Yednak into Balassi, Yannick Balassi on the ball, inside to Wilfred Zahar, Zahar back to Balassi, who goes for goal, just off target. And that will do it, final score at Carlisle Grand. Bray Wanderers nil, Crystal Palace won. We can't get back-to-back -back wins, and sadly for us, Pardew side get all three points. Frustrating game for me in this one. Kenna had the best chance with the free header. I really should have found a back in the net, or at least tested the goalkeeper, really, but could only hit the bar. Palace did play better, though. Five shots, two on target, including a screamer from Joel Ward that separates the two sides. He was definitely man of the match, as Palace grab a priceless win. But I'll say it again. You know, I'd rather play in those sort of games and lose them than play in the game against West Brom. You know, it was more fun to play in. It wasn't even that action-packed, that's the thing, but it was still a lot more enjoyable. The only problem is now we're back in the relegation zone, so, you know... <laughs> It's not disastrous. It's not disastrous at all. We're only one point behind Stoke City and only two points behind three teams, Manchester United, Swansea and Aston Villa. So it's not terrible, but, you know, we could have done with a point in that game at least. Still, only Arsenal away now. They're only in third place, so there's no reason why I can't win this game. To be fair, the last time we took on the team that were in third place away from home, we beat them and that was Chelsea. So no reason why we can't do it against Arsenal. And we will indeed field a weakened side for this one, a 4-4-2 diamond wide as as well gonna have to do it just because the fitness problems are so bad right now and uh, Moore is the only starter for us from our usual first 11 including Drea as well uh, because we don't have anyone else to play so 
because of that, Moore stays out there, as does Drea, and we'll go with this lineup. If nothing else, though, it should be interesting to see how I get on with these players. I haven't really used many of them before, so it'll be interesting to see what I can do with those guys out there and see if I'm any better with some, you know, different faces as opposed to the usual first 11. If we can escape this game with a point, I'll be absolutely delighted. A week inside, away against Arsenal in third place, a point in this game would be magical. And Arsenal's team looks like this. De Silva up top, Macy in goal. A couple of interesting selections there. It's also got Pogba in the midfield too, so got to be wary of that. It's a really good Arsenal team, obviously, no surprises. Have left Sanchez on the bench though, but uh, compared to our team, it should still be far superior. So I don't expect us getting anything from this game, but again, I'd love a point, so maybe we'll get one. And 21 minutes in, Arsenal have had one shot, which Drew had a simple save for, and haven't done much else. And McDonald's won the ball off Mursaka, and McDonald for 1 0. What a save with a goalkeeper! And in the second, Henry saved, and it goes up in the air. And Arsenal will clear with Jack Wilshire. How on earth did I mess that up? McDonald was right there, and the shot was brilliantly saved by Macy the first time. But the second header, like it had so little power on it, the goalkeeper just comically dived backwards, I think, to mess me about. That was ridiculous. And now Bellerin's on the ball inside the area. Hector Bellerin fires it in the near post. And three minutes after we should have taken the lead, the right back opens the score for Arsenal. Fantastic. Those moments right there are what can cost an entire season. McDonough wins it back off Murtasaka. The shot was brilliantly saved by Macy first time, but as it fell back to him, how did he not head the rebound in? Anyway, Bellerin scores three minutes later. Arsenal are now in front, and we've gone from being what could have been, surprisingly, a goal up at the Emirates to a goal down, and now our task has got extremely hard. I'll take the blame for it. I'll take the blame for not finishing the first chance, but the header, I mean, I'm sorry, I held down circle. I can't understand how McDonough didn't finish that one, but 1-0 to the Gooners, and uh, we trail. It's the silver for Arsenal through to Rosicki, and out wide is Theo Walcott, and Walcott on the ball, takes it around his man, and still Theo Walcott inside towards Pogba, Pogba inside to Rosicki, oh, what a let off. And now Wilshere through to Walcott, and Theo Walcott goes for goal, and finds the back of the net from range, just before the break, Arsenal 2, Bray Wanderers 0, there's half a game to play, let's not bother, the game's already done. It's a really nicely worked goal by Arsenal, simple passes, the ball comes to Walcott, takes it around his man, levers it from Rage and Drea couldn't get to it. 2-0 to Arsenal, surely the game's over and we're not even at half time yet. Drea, quick throw to Kelly and a chance on the break here, come on let's push it, Kelly on the ball, he's got a man running through with him, it's Cassidy, Cassidy now, needs a teammate, come on, feed it inside, look man inside the area, chance here with a fake shot, look man still, look man off the bench, great save by Macy and then the rebound is put over the bar but he's offside anyway. Conley wins it off Pogba, plays it inside to his teammate and a chance here is Kelly, feeds it inside to Lookman, who scores, and with 10 seconds to go, we're sort of back in the game. Lookman's fell over, so we need to get the ball, and Lookman scored, and the clock's still running. Just pick the ball up, for goodness sake. I couldn't even pick the ball up to take it back to the halfway line. Still, great ball inside. Lookman, our top scorer of another goal to his collection, coming off the bench, gets goal number six, and I don't think it's going to matter, because there's only a few seconds left, but it's 2-1, and you never know. If we can just get the ball and get one more chance, we could try and grab ourselves an equalising goal. And if we're going to do it, we've got to do it now. Drear on the ball. Long throw towards Lookman. Flicks it on towards Kelly here. Kelly. Oh, referee, we're on the break. We were on the break. That is so, so annoying. The referee is well within his right to blow for full time there. No doubt about it. But we were on the break. We had a man out wide. I was about to give him the ball. We had Ricketts, who's so rapid off the bench, running through as well. There was a real chance to get just one more opportunity to find an equalising goal. And the referee blew for full time. I'm actually really frustrated because there was a genuine chance there to get one more opportunity to possibly find an equalising goal. But sadly, referee called time. Great game, though. It did finish 2-1 to Arsenal. We do get back on the score sheet, if nothing else. Look, man, we sick for the season. And I have to say, a pretty good effort from us in that one. You know, not too bad at all. We had some great chances. Uh, McDonough had to pick at a bunch, really, other than Lookman's goal, which he should have scored from one in the first half. But either way, Arsenal get the win by two goals to one. A fun game, though, but sadly, another defeat for us, consecutive losses, and we'll still be in the relegation zone as we end the halfway stage. Gutted. Man of the match to Walcott, though. He scored their second goal. A really nice strike from range and controlled his side of the midfield as well. And that is going to end today's episode of Saving Bray. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Unfortunately, we do end on a sad note. As you can see, Bray have slipped back into the relegation zone at halfway stage. But there's still a long way to go in the season. And you know what they say? It ain't over until the fat lady sings.